afternoon. I'm sorry not to be able to be with you in person, but modern technology has enabled me, enabled me at least to be with you in this fashion. I'm talking to you today about Nathan Bierenbaum and the way he conceived of Eastern European Jews, writing as he did in 1970, just before the famous conference which he organized in Chernowitz, a town which is now in the Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine. An international, but it was the first international conference on behalf of the Yiddish language. Birnbaum was a very interesting, very unique figure in modern German Jewish, Eastern European Jewish history. He was sui generis, you might say. There was no one else like him. And this article, until now published only in German and in Yiddish, is very good for those of you who, who have had no previous contact with him because it reviews some of his most basic convictions. You'll have to hold your questions until I'm finished and maybe you can send them to me in some YouTube fashion or other. His uh, article is called The Tasks of Eastern European Jews. He starts off with a very important point in his thinking, namely the difference between so-called Western Jews and Eastern Jews. Western Jews, of course, were the Jews of Western Europe. But in his view, Eastern Jews were not the currently Eidot HaMizrach, but Eastern European Jews. And he starts off with the topic of Zionism, or as he calls it, the Palestine Project. 1907, there was no thought of the State of Israel at that time, but still a fond hope. It says, one of the problems with the Zionist project is that Western European Jews predominate in its governance. And there is such a difference between Western European Jews and Eastern European Jews that that skews the entire effort. And The problem is as follows, as he sees it. Western European Jews are wealthy, of course, educated to a large extent, but they're also devoid of the inner juices, of the inner convictions, of the inner beliefs, of the inner, inner sp spirituality of Eastern European Jews. And they are, as he says, without inner spirituality and without feverish conviction, both of which typify Eastern European Jews in his view. In fact, he says, there is no sign among them of that enthusiastic apostasy shared by Eastern European Jews. The 
with Eastern European Jews, whether they were religious or not, had a certain characteristic which I suspect he would think was a result of their having just very recently been influenced by modern Western Europe. They were still vibrant. They had a culture of their own. The term of the Western Jews is not so-called assimilation. But the fact of having lost their own culture, they had not arrived at any other. This is a, a Birnbaumian concept, but they could be a population without any culture. And then of course they have this very very um, deprived Western European Jewishness, bloodless, lifeless, impoverished, removed from resources, removed from a long-standing conviction. And he says, very exceptional you know, individuals can, under these circumstances, such deprived circumstances, penetrate deep, deeply into another culture. But there are a few genuinely uh, exceptional individuals in the Western world that have been able to do so among the English, among the Germans, among the French, but on the whole, it is impossible for an individual without any culture of his own, any deep abiding culture of his own to penetrate into the being of another culture. The Eastern European Jews, on the other hand, by which he meant the Jews of the Pale of Settlement in Russia, Tsarist Russia, Galicia, which was then divided entirely within the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Bukovina, which was also a province of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but later became embedded in Romania, Romania proper, and a small part of Hungary. These were the Eastern European Jewish enclaves. enclaves. And their special gift has been that all their life has been changed and in some respects improved by tremendous economic and political changes that have reached their, their countries. They nevertheless have kept their own ethos they have kept their own awareness of themselves and all their own awareness of each other's. And they have been elevated to the status of becoming a nation of bourgeois merchants and shopkeepers instead of beggars and mendicants as have the Jews of the Arab Eastern, European, Eastern current countries. They were elevated to the status of a modern historical nation. They are a unique people, the Eastern European Jews, in that it is not that they have no homeland, have no homeland but they, their homeland has been their belief system. And the expression of this belief system and the various behaviors and um, manners in which 